good morning dears today we'll be discussing the next set of probable questions from the chapter breathing and exchange of gases chapter number 17 okay will be going to the first question of this chapter namely the thoracic chamber is formed by different parts of the body see what is the thoracic chamber it is commonly called as chest chest is a strong robust chamber which is having sternum on the ventral side see sternum on the ventral side there is only one option immediately we came to the answer Okay, sternum on the ventral side. On the back, that is the dorsal side, we are having the vertebral column. Vertebral column on the dorsal side. On the lateral sides, we are having the ribs, 12 pairs of ribs. And it is demarcated, separated from, from the abdominal cavity by means of a muscular diaphragm. Muscular diaphragm. So diaphragm on the lower side. So the option immediately is dull. We came to the answer immediately with that one single clue. True statement. Expiratory capacity. What is capacity? Capacity is a value obtained by adding certain volumes. How much of air you can expire? That is called expiratory capacity, EC. This EC is equal to, I will give you a diagram later on. EC is equal to tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume. Expiratory capacity is the total volume of air a pers person can inspire. Or no, expire. It should be expiratory. Similarly, this value is thus wrong. Inspiratory capacity is I see inspiratory capacity exactly like this. Total volume of air that a man can inspire. This is TB plus inspiratory reserve volume. I am definitely giving you a graph in one of the questions I have drawn it the spirograph number of questions are based upon that question itself that concept so you have to be very thorough with that one that's why I have given it This is the one. Okay. Tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, these two together is called inspiratory capacity. TV plus ERV, this is expiratory capacity. Got it? ERV plus RV is called. Functional residual capacity, FRC. Okay. Now, from, say for example, A, B, C, D, E. From A to D, this is called vital capacity. And from A to E, that is vital capacity plus RB is called Total lung capacity. Is that clear? Okay. So now you go to the functional residual capacity. Okay. FRC is the volume of air that will remain lung. After a normal expression, that's a correct value. Why? Because 
See, I am drawing it again for you here. FRC that is the volume of air that will be remaining after a normal expiration that include air that you can send out plus air that you cannot send out. Air you can send out is called the additional volume of air that you can send out. Expiratory reserve volume plus the residual volume here you cannot send out. That's a correct statement. So this one plus this one. That is called functional residual capacity which is remaining in the lungs as a residual volume, as a reserve volume. Okay, that's correct. Vital capacity is the maximum volume of air. See, this one. So after a forceful Expiration, what much of volume you can take in? It is also equal to what maximum volume of air you can take in after a forceful expiration. Vital capacity is maximum volume of air you can breathe in after a forced expiration. Correct. It includes the inspiratory reserve. Uh, inspiratory volume, inspiratory reserve volume, PV plus ERV. That's what's called the vital capacity. That also is the correct one. Clear? Vital capacity is this one. Maximum volume of air a person can breathe in. Okay, so we are all sending out maximum, then you are breathing in. Additional volume you are taking, the normal volume, additional volume you can send out. So, all of these three, it is called vital capacity. So, three and four are correct. Inspiratory capacity, this is inspiratory capacity IRV plus TV. This is expiratory capacity, ERV plus TV. They are all wrong here. Is that clear? You can have minimum one to two questions from this part. It's a spirogram and spirometer values. Okay. Choose the word. The respiratory gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged by. How they are all exchanged by? It's very simple mechanism of diffusion. No other mechanism. Simple diffusion. So mainly based upon, it is simple diffusion. Gases are diffusing to gas as well as the thickness of the membrane involved in diffusion is also important factor that affect the rate of. So what are the three factors? One is the most important one, the gradients of diffusion okay so we are having three factors one gradients of partial pressure two the solubility of the gases that is why we say that oxygen is having double the diffusion capacity than nitrogen and carbon dioxide is having 20 to 25 times more solubility, so it is more soluble, more diffusing. And third one, the thickness of the membrane. Thickness of the membrane is less than 1 mm. That is why oxygen and carbon dioxide are easily diffusing across these three cell layers. So, what are these factors here? Only two are there. One is simple diffusion. It is not active transport, facilitated transport, endosmosis, exocytosis. So only simple diffusion, solubility of the gas. Okay. Oxygen is having double the solubility than nitrogen. Carbon dioxide is having 20 to 25 times more solubility. That's why it is more diffusing. So that is the correct answer.
find the missing words. This is the diagram, diagrammatic representation of the parts involved in regulating the breathing activities. The respiratory rhythm center. It is a group of neurons which are present the dorsal part of the medulla oblongata. This part is the medulla. Okay, you can see it. Dorsal respiratory group which is regulating only inspiration. There is another center in the ventral part called ventral respiratory group which is inactive normally but once it becomes active it can control both inspiration and expiration. A specialized center present in the medulla region of the brain called DASH is the primary responsible for the regulation of the respiration. So respiration is mainly under the control of dorsal respiratory group. This is the diagram which is not in our books. Okay, we can draw like that for our easy understanding. This is the medulla and this part is the pons, which is a part of the cerebellum. Pons is a part of the cerebellum on the floor of the... Okay, now, second one. Dash is situated adjacent to the rhythm center, which is highly sensitive to carbon dioxide. That is a chemosensitive area. We are having the pneumotaxic center higher up in the pons, a neustic center. This a neustic center is responsible for the depth of the breath regulation. And the third one is the chemosensitive area. This part is responsible for the chemosensitive area which is very close to, which is responsible for carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion sensitivity. They cannot bring directly any change, but they will modulate the rhythm of the dorsal respiratory group. That's how the respiratory rate is altered. Okay, so we are having the respiratory rhythm center, dorsal respiratory group. Respiratory rhythm center is in the dorsal side of the medulla. The second one is chemosensitive area, which is sensitive to carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion concentrations. Pneumotaxic center is, see, it is responsible for switching off the dorsal respiratory group. It will switch off. Once it is switched off, inspiration stops. When inspiration stops, it brings about expiration. That is the action. Okay. It is switching off. Pneumotaxic center is present in the pons. A neustic center is responsible for regulating the depth of breathing, whether you should breathe shallow or deep. And chemosensitive area is very close to the dorsal respiratory group. Clear? Then, people living in high level, that is in mountainous areas, tribals, which are all living for generations in that area, will be adapted to a condition living or condition present there. What is that condition? They are all having low partial pressure for oxygen, low atmospheric pressure. So, their body has to make some adjustments. They will acquire that adjustment. They will be having more RBC count. We are living in plains. We will be having maximum 5 to 5.5 million of RBC in 1 cc, but they will be having up to 8 million, 8 million. They will be having increased respiratory rate, increased cardiac rate, and their hemoglobin will be combined with the oxygen even in a small partial pressure, in a lower partial pressure. These are all an adaptation for living in high altitude. Otherwise, Suppose you are all suddenly going to a high altitude, you will be experiencing what is called mountain sickness or altitude sickness where your heart rate is not adapted for a living in such altitude, RBC count, respiratory rate, you are not adjusted. Your body adjusts physiologically. Within a couple of weeks, you become adjusted to that condition. That is called acclimatization. These are all adaptations for living. See, this is because in high altitude, people 
the rbc count is very high why because this is an adjustment this is an adaptation to live in such altitudes where the partial pressure of oxygen atmospheric pressure itself is very low atmospheric oxygen level is very less and hence more rbc are needed to absorb the required amount of oxygen to survive you will also become hyper number of rbc become more than normal hyper count will be there if you go there and live for say for example 6 months now when you come back you will be again reverted back your blood count come to normal values this is the reason so you will be having more blood count more hemoglobin more efficiency of carrying oxygen that's why sports persons especially those are all playing say for example cricket football they are all given a final training in high altitudes because they become adjusted to that low oxygen condition in there so that the stamina will be improved when they come to the land immediately they will be having high stamina because of the high oxygen carrying capacity of the body that's why we require high altitude playgrounds just before the original play the players are all given training in such grounds clear which statement is incorrect 97% of oxygen is transported by yes we are having oxygen transported in two ways 97% is in the chemical 3% is carried in a physical form correct 20 to 25% of carbon dioxide is transported by plasma see plasma is transporting about 77% how 20 to 25% average 23 is in the form of carbamino hemoglobin in rbc okay 70% most majority is in the form of bicarbonate in plasma and another average 7% is in the form of physical dissolved form carbon dioxide get dissolved in the water more readily forming carbonic acid so 7% is in the form of dissolved form in the form of carbonic acid 70% in the form of bicarbonate both of them are in plasma so total 77 in plasma in rbc only 23% that is in the form of carbamino hemoglobin carbon dioxide combined with the amino group of hemoglobin and forms carbamino hemoglobin clear the correct statement regarding oxygen dissociation curve which is a sigmoid curve correct a straight it become maximum in this percentage of saturation in y axis and partial pressure of oxygen are plotted correct this curve is called oxygen dissociation curve correct it is not oxygen dissociation curve it is oxygen dissociation curve why because this curve is used to explain under what conditions oxy hemoglobin dissociates into oxygen and hemoglobin it is highly useful for studying the effect of factors like correct see partial pressure of carbon dioxide how we can explain simply if carbon dioxide is present oxy hemoglobin saturation become decreased now you are having 100% saturation now it is saturated to say for example 70% 60% etc depending upon the carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide will lower the saturation point so 100% saturated oxy hemoglobin splits and oxygen is released to the tissues when there is carbon dioxide this is what's happening when oxy hemoglobin reaches the tissues so greater the amount of carbon dioxide greater will be the dissociation so that is the effect of carbon dioxide that's called bohr effect this can be explained by this diagram similarly hydrogen ion concentration in tissues we are having more hydrogen ion concentration more hydrogen ion concentration means more will be the 
मोर विल बी दि हाइड्रोजन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन मोर विल बी सी इफ हाइड्रोजन एंड कॉन्सेंट हाउ इट इज हाइड्रोजन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन नेगेटिव लॉगरिथम ऑफ हाइड्रोजन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन पीएच मोर हाइड्रोजन एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन मींस द पीएच इज लेस पीएच लेस मींस एसिडिटी यू आर हैविंग एसिडिटी ऑन बाइंडिंग इफेक्ट विद हीमोग्लोबिन सो ऑल ऑफ देम आर करेक्ट so we go to the option elephant see suppose you are all having three ph values and you are all having three graphs x y z and the ph values are say for example uh, 7.4 7.0 6.8. What will be the graph for 7.4? A, B, C, etc. We can explain it like this. When there is more alkalinity, 7.4 above 4 is. I mean above 7 is alkaline condition. Less hydrogen and concentration. Then the curve moves to the left. So when it is more alkaline, the affinity is more. Okay, so the curve will be moving to the left. So X curve, which is in the extreme left, is for the maximum pH value. Okay, and the curve on the extreme right is for the least one. So it is six point eight. Acidic. And the medium will be for seven point zero. So you can explain the effect of hydrogen and concentration, or that is pH, in the same curve. So what are the factors like carbon dioxide, pH, etc.? Effect of these factors on the oxygen dissociation can be explained by this curve. That is why this curve is called oxygen dissociation curve. Okay. Correct statement with reference to transportation of respiratory gases. Hemoglobin is necessary for the carbon dioxide of trans carbon dioxide and carbonic anhydrase for the transportation of oxygen. No, carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme that will be catalyzing the dissolution of water. Now, carbon dioxide and water. so carbonic anhydrase is also responsible for the splitting of carbonic acid into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ions this is happening during the transportation of carbon dioxide okay in the form of bicarbonate so this is wrong hemoglobin is necessary for the transportation of oxygen correct because oxy hemoglobin is formed 97% is transported by this mechanism and carbonic anhydrase for the transportation of carbon dioxide that is a correct statement only oxygen is transported by blood no both oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported only carbon dioxide transported no so only b is the correct statement which is incorrect match among the following see we are all having that value in one of the questions see this is very 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 repeatedly asked ic okay what is ic ic is tv plus irv it is almost 3000 to 3500 ec tv plus irv it is 1500 to 1600 ml frc er Uh, ERV plus RV. Okay, that is 2,100 to 2,300 ml. VC it is 4,000. Okay, these are the volumes, and by adding these volumes, you get the values. That is how I have written it. Okay, the only value I have not written is ERV. This is. ERV, ERV is thousand to thousand one hundred ml. 
okay so by adding these values we get the capacities four volumes five capacities so what is this value i have written here okay so now remember these values and come to our question we see the irv that is correct erv again correct rv these are all directly observed from the spiro uh, spirogram we are all getting pv 500 bc is only 4800 so this is wrong one alveoli the large bronchi of lung are respectively lined by of course alveoli is lined by squamous epithelium because only squamous epithelium will be allowing the exchange of materials and immediately bronchi what are bronchi primary secondary tertiary they are all lined by along with the trachea they are lined by pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium glandular and ciliated epithelium so the answer goes to apple this pseudo stratified epithelium understand that pseudo stratified epithelium match the following questions see these terms are not in our book nia means breathing u means comfortable true true or comfortable breathing okay this means painful this the uh, painful breathing chest pain okay hyponia hypo means low so that is the word you have to remember capnia is a term associated with carbon dioxide level because our body is sensitive to carbon dioxide and hydrogen concentrations we use these terms hypercapnia for excess presence of carbon dioxide okay hypocapnia hypercapnia here it is nia nia means breathing so you nia what is comfortable breathing okay so normal breathing one is f so immediately you eliminated all other options and you concentrate only on b and c and they are all different only in the last one so five what is five asphyxia blocking in the respiratory tract will lead to stopping that is called asphyxia so asphyxia is inflammation of the pleural membrane no inflammation of the pleural membrane is called pleurisy this is pleurisy inflammation or pleurity pleurisy or pleurity so it is pleurisy here so this is mutually exchange between these two okay so asphyxia is respiratory arrest blockage in the respiratory tract will be leading to respiratory arrest and pleurisy is the inflammatory so we came to the answer that this is the correct one okay and this is wrong here and how we will be going to all words and their meaning hyponia what is hypo hypo means low breathing rate cyano says cyano blue so there will be sometimes bluish markings on the skin and mucous membrane when we are having uh, the blood coming out and getting clotted there or because of low amount of uh, oxygen available in the tissues that is called cyanosis blowing of the body dyspnea this means painful so painful breathing respiratory difficulty difficult breathing okay and asphyxia arrest of breathing pleurid c is inflammation of the pleural membrane so the answer is cat to so understand how you are all arriving at the answer even without going to the all the options even if you don't know this there will be some clue word in that one that will be helping you in identifying the answer with the help of that clue word you have to identify the correct answer halday effect we are having bore effect and halday effect which is not given in our books see bore effect occur in tissues because of the high partial pressure of carbon dioxide 
the oxyhemoglobin HbO2 splits into oxygen and hemoglobin. That oxygen is escaping into the tissues. That is how oxyhemoglobin splits because carbon dioxide is having a negative influence on the relation between affinity between oxygen and hemoglobin. Whereas the Haldane effect occurs in lungs, alveoli. What is that Haldane effect? Because of a change in pH, the bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate is splitting into sodium ion and bicarbonate ion. This bicarbonate ion, this bicarbonate ion now enter into the RBC, combine with the hydrogen, forms H2CO3 that immediately splits into carbon dioxide and water that carbon dioxide escape out. That is how the strong stable sodium bicarbonate is splitting and carbon dioxide is escaping as venous blood reaches the alveoli. So bore effect occur in tissues, all the effect occur in lungs. What is bore effect? Bore effect is the negative influence of carbon dioxide in the relation between hemoglobin and oxygen. That is why oxyhemoglobin splits and oxygen goes to the tissues. Haldane effect occur in alveoli. When there is a change in pH, that is the real cause, a change in pH, cause sodium bicarbonate to split and bicarbonate ions enter in and combined with the hydrogen ion in the RBC, it forms H2CO3 that immediately splits into H2O and carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide escape up into the alveoli. That is how the strong stable sodium bicarbonate is releasing carbon dioxide. Clear? That effect is because of a change in pH. What caused the change in pH? There is a question. I will explain it later on. Okay. See. This is what is happening. It is in tissues. Can you see it clearly? Carbon dioxide in plasma, it enters into the RPC. It is given here. So, diffuses carbon dioxide, dissolves in water in the presence of carbon and hydrates. Okay, this is regarding the reaction taking place in tissues because carbon dioxide is produced in tissues. So, what is the reaction occurring in tissues? That reaction is concerned with carbon dioxide transportation and oxygen is also released into tissues by bore effect. Okay. So, and find the answer to the question that follows. The reaction represented occur in which region? Of course, it is in tissues. What the reaction for indicates? What is that reaction? Carbon dioxide is causing the split of oxyhemoglobin and oxygen is diffusing. You can see it. Oxygen is diffusing. What is that oxygen diffusion? That is Bohr effect. Okay. The reaction 1 to 6 thus represents the Bohr effect. That's I. Just now I told you and what does the reaction for indicates, see, whenever there is diffusion of carbon dioxide, see, this carbon dioxide is entering in, diffusing with the water, uh, diffusing into the RBC, dissolving the water, forming H2CO3 that is also split into hydrogen ion and H2CO3. That hydrogen ion is taken up by the hemoglobin. Why? Because hemoglobin which was carrying oxygen is split. Oxygen is going out and now hemoglobin is free. That hemoglobin will take that hydrogen and will form hemoglobinic acid which is a very strong acid than oxyhemoglobin. That's why there is more acidity in tissues. Understand? 
that is why the ph is coming down that is in tissues we are having hydrogen concentration high ph is coming down acidity we have studied it is because of formation of hemoglobinic acid hsb and that will be affecting the hydrogen ion concentration it is affecting the hydrogen ion concentrations and to maintain the normalcy the same level of same charges are diffusing in the opposite direction so the carbon dioxide is diffusing out and equal number of bicarbonate ions so this is what is called chloride shift or hamburger shift both are same chloride shift or hamburger shift are same for every chloride ion that is uh, sorry bicarbonate ion that is going out equal amount of chloride ion comes in okay here in tissues bicarbonates are going out okay and getting dissolved in the or combining with the sodium in the plasma forming sodium bicarbonate so only negative charge bicarbonate ions are going out means that will upset the ph within the rbc so equal number of same charge negative charge chloride ions enter in that is called chloride shift so chloride ions are coming to the rbc bicarbonate ions are going out of the rbc in tissues in alveoli it is just the reverse as we reach the alveoli what is the reaction that is occurring let us see the sodium bicarbonate is splitting okay the sodium bicarbonate splits sodium will be remaining and the bicarbonate ions enter it will be combined with the hydrogen ion why hydrogen ion is released there see it was in the form of hemoglobinic acid hemoglobin was present in the form of hemoglobinic acid now here you are having oxygen that oxygen will be combined with the hemoglobin now hydrogen ion is released okay that hydrogen will be combined with the HCO3 forming H2CO3. This will be immediately splitting and will be forming carbon dioxide that has step out and water that is remaining in the RBC. This entire activity taking place in the alveoli is just reverse of what is happening in the tissues. Here bicarbonates are all getting in, negative charge ions getting in. equal number of chloride ions escape out this chloride ion now combined with the sodium and will be forming sodium chloride again this reciprocal exchange of mutual exchange of chloride ions and bicarbonate ions between plasma and the rbc during carbon dioxide transportation is called hamburger shift or chloride shift okay in which condition the following reaction will occur this is in tissues okay in tissues we are having bohr effect what is the reason for bohr effect high partial pressure of carbon dioxide high temperature high hydrogen ion concentration we can also add hydrogen ion concentration high under these conditions this will occur clear hydrogen ion concentration high means ph low why it is ph low because hemoglobinic acid is converted into see in tissues Hema HSB is converted into less acidic. Okay, we are having hemoglobinic acid more acidic HSB. In alveoli, we are having HSB converted to HBO2, which is also acidic but less acidic. That's why there is a change in pH. That change in pH. What is the real cause of that change in pH? It is. hemoglobinic acid converted into hpo2 this is strong acid this is mild acid so there's a change in ph that change in ph is responsible for the breaking of sodium bicarbonate that's why sodium bicarbonate break and 
the carbon dioxide is released resulting in the release of carbon dioxide in the alveoli this is the haldane effect and this is what is happening in tissues this is the bore effect clear these are all occurring during transportation of carbon dioxide in the form of sodium carbonate that part is not at all in our books again arrange the following in the increasing order of volumes so we have to know what are the volumes capacities here all of them are not volumes we are having some capacities also included so we have to know what are these values and arrange them so always the smallest is tv so it should come so the correct order is tv which is smallest then irv what is that irv we are having irv addition of these two values irv is inspector reserve volume irv is 2500 okay this is higher but there is erv erv is 1000 so it is not higher than that of this one so we cannot take this one because this is lesser this is greater vc no vc is not the larger it is one of the largest second largest value tv tidal volume that is correct then erv no erv is a very high value erv is 1000 2000 expected reserve volume 1100 then irv irv is 2500 then rv rv is a small value so we cannot take this one also so vc is a higher value so tv then erv correct so this is 500 erv 1000 1100 then rv residual volume what is that residual volume residual volume is frv 1100 to 1200 then irv inspectory reserve volume Inspector reserve volume is two thousand five hundred to three thousand, and vital capacity. What is vital capacity? Four thousand to four thousand six hundred. So that is in a correct increasing order. That's why we take it. Okay, we have to calculate it. So these things you should be thorough in mind values. Okay. by adding volumes we are having only four volumes by adding four volumes we get five capacities capacities are always obtained by adding volumes the factor which does not affect the rate of alveolar diffusion i have told you that it is under the control of three important factors solubility of gases carbon dioxide is having 20 to 25 times more solubility thickness of the membrane more is the thickness less will be the diffusion rate here the diffusion membrane is only less than 1 mm that is why diffusion is taking place very quickly pressure gradient very important concentration gradient again important reactivity of the gas is not at all important so all of these are important in the alveoli there is a high partial pressure of oxygen low partial pressure of carbon dioxide that is a correct statement lesser hydrogen concentration and lower temperature that is the condition that is favoring oxygen and hemoglobin to combine that is the condition in alveoli in tissues it is just the reverse there is a low partial pressure of oxygen high carbon dioxide high hydrogen concentration and high temperature that's also a correct one In tissues, the conditions are favorable for the dissociation of oxygen. Correct. 
because there is more partial pressure of carbon dioxide and less partial pressure of oxygen. So, correct. In the lungs, factors are all favorable for the formation of the oxygen hemoglobin. That is why in the alveoli, we are having oxygen and hemoglobin combined together and in the tissues, oxygen hemoglobin splitting. So, that is the correct. All of them are correct statements. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry combined with a maximum of one hemoglobin can combine with four oxygen. Why? Because one hemoglobin, what is the composition of hemoglobin? It is having four heme group. Each heme is having one ion in first condition. It can combine with one oxygen. So four heme means four oxygen. So one hemoglobin molecule can combine with four oxygen molecules. Clear? One gram of hemoglobin can bind with how much? It is 1.34 ml of oxygen. And normally in a healthy man, an average of 15 gram of hemoglobin is present. Okay. So 100 ml of arterial blood will be having 15 gram of hemoglobin. One hemoglobin, one gram of hemoglobin can combine with 1.34. So 100 ml of arterial blood can combine with 19.4 ml. How you obtained it? 15 gram of hemoglobin. Each gram can combine with 1.34. So 19.4. So 100 ml of arterial blood will be contained in 19.4. We take generally average 20 ml. And venous blood will be containing generally 14.4. Or roughly we take it as 15. So difference between these two is 5 ml. That's why we generally say that 100 ml of arterial blood can deliver, not carry, deliver. It can give to the tissues 5 ml normally under normal conditions. If the person is in vigorous exercise, he will be having more carbon dioxide produced. So there will be more bore effect. So more oxygen will be breaking from hemoglobin. So more oxygen will be released. So he can release and deliver up to 15. Up to 15. So in such condition, he will be giving up to 15 ml of oxygen to the tissues. So 100 ml of arterial blood can deliver up to 15 ml in vigorous exercise condition. Remember, in normal condition, he is having 20 ml of arterial blood, ml oxygen in arterial blood. And out of this, only 5 is given. So, 5 out of 20, that is 1 by 4, that is 25% of oxygen alone is given. Okay. One fourth, that is 25% of oxygen alone is given to the tissues. The remaining 75% is in the veins. Our blood is not giving all the 100% oxygen to the tissues. Only 25% is given. The remaining 75% is retaining the venous blood. Is that clear? But when it is in vigorous exercise, it is giving up to 15. So, out of 20, 15 is given. That means 3 by 4 is given. 75% is given. That means only 25% is retained in the venous blood. Is that point clear? This is how questions will be asked. Every 100 ml of oxygen blood can deliver about 5 ml. Is that point clear? How we calculated this one? Okay. Tobacco smoke contain, when it is taken as smoking, carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide is a poison because carbon monoxide is having 200 to 250 times more affinity with hemoglobin. All the positions or sites to which oxygen should be coming and binding will be occupied by carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide is having 200 to 250 times more affinity. Okay. So that there will be no space for oxygen to come and bind with. So the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin is very much reduced. So we'll be suffering from lack of oxygen. Okay. So carbon monoxide 
will be reducing the oxygen carrying capacity. Carbon monoxide is having 200 to 250 times affinity than oxygen with hemoglobin. That is what is called carbon monoxide poisoning. In certain industries, will be exposed to certain conditions. So these particles may be inhaled and will be causing inflammation in the lung and that is called occupational diseases. Siderosis, silicosis, asbestosis are all the conditions depending upon the material that is foreign material that is inhaled and deposited in the lungs. Normally silica, sand particles. Here the question is stone breaking tiny sand particles, that is silicosis. Still the current event that occur during inspiration. How inspiration occur? Inspiration occur, air is entering when the diaphragm is moving down. The sternum will be pushing the ribs, uh, sternum will be pushed by the ribs. So, contraction of the diaphragm, correct? Contraction of the external intercostal muscles. Diaphragm is the primary inspiratory muscle and external intercostal muscles are the secondary inspiratory muscles. Okay. Without diaphragm, nobody can breathe. That way it is the primary, most important inspiratory muscle. We are having 11 pairs of intercostal muscles, 11 pairs of external and 11 pairs of internal intercostal muscles. External intercostal muscles are inspiratory muscles. Pulmonary volume is increased, not decreased. This part is wrong. Intrapulmonary pressure is thus. See, pressure within the lung is decreased because the volume of the thoracic cavity increases. Pulmonary volume increases, pressure decreases. So, B and, sorry, 2 and 3, uh, 3 and 4 are wrong. Only 1 and 2 are correct. Okay. Yes, and the question from oxygen dissociation car, wrong statement with reference to transport of partial pressure of carbon dioxide can interfere, correct, negatively affect. I have the hydrogen and concentration in alveoli fibers, see, in alveoli hydrogen and concentration is low, low, it is high in tissues, hydrogen and concentration low means pH is high, pH is high, hydrogen, Hydrogen concentration in tissues that is low. Okay, so low pH that is wrong. Low partial pressure of carbon dioxide, partial pressure of carbon dioxide in alveoli, in alveoli fibers. That's the correct one. Binding of oxygen with hemoglobin mainly related to the partial pressure of oxygen. Correct. See, the P50 value, what is that P50 value? The partial pressure at which 50% saturation occur. This is for our hemoglobin 27, partial pressure 27. Name the pulmonary disease in which alveolar surface area is involved in gaseous exchange that is drastically reduced, collapse or the alveolar wall becomes thick and fibroid, unsuitable for exchange. That is called emphysema. What is asthma? Asthma is irregular spasm. So that difficulty in sending out of air. Expression become difficult because of the irregular contraction, uncontrolled spasm on the smooth muscles on the bronchi. That is asthma. Pleurisy is inflammation on Pleural membrane. Pneumonia is a bacterial infection. Okay. The reduction in the damage of the alveolar wall is emphysema, mainly caused by cigarette smoking. Yes. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, it is 104. It is in the blood. It is venous blood that is reaching the lungs. It is only 40. That is a great gradient that by from Alveoli to the venous blood, oxygen is coming. So that oxygen level in the blood increases gradually and reaches maximum 95. It becomes arterial blood. So it is always more than the blood. Whether it is a venous blood or arterial blood, 104. The value in alveoli is always higher than. 
So we take the answer four. Clear? In venous blood, it is forty. In arterial blood, it is ninety-five. Partial production of oxygen is different. Okay, but it is always higher in alveoli than these two. Okay. Lung do not collapse between breath. Even if you are expiring, see there is small amount of air always remaining that you can never breathe out. Whatever may be the force, you may be sending out some extra amount of air that is expiratory reserve volume. But still, there is about one thousand, more than one thousand mL. Actually, thousand one hundred to thousand two hundred of mL. They are remaining in the lung that you can never send out. That is called the residual volume (RV). That residual volume is always remaining, and that is responsible for keeping the alveoli always in a inflated condition. The alveoli is never collapsing because of the lungs do not collapse between the lungs, and some air always remains in the lung, which can never be expelled. Why? Why there is air remaining? Because in the alveoli, the pressure is always less than. There is a negative pressure always, always. The pressure inside the lung is much less than the air present outside. That is why some air is always remaining that you cannot send out. Okay, that is responsible for keeping the alveoli in a inflated condition. There is a negative pressure in the lungs. Lungs are made up of air-filled sacs called alveoli. They do not collapse even after forceful expiration because there is some amount of air. The same question, okay, repeated in another form. That is called residual volume, thousand one hundred to thousand two hundred mL. So because of that, the lungs will not be collapsing. Which of the following option correctly represents the lung condition as asthma? Asthma is actually Difficulty in breathing, actually not for taking in air, but difficulty in sending out air. Expression become very difficult because of the spasms and emphysema. In emphysema, there is decreased respiratory surface. The alveoli are becoming fibroid, and the total respiratory surface is drastically reduced. So, decreased respiratory surface is the real reason for emphysema. Okay, so. In asthma, there is inflammation of bronchioles. Actually, it is called bronchitis, bronchial asthma. It is called bronchial asthma. So, there is inflammation of bronchioles. Inflammation of bronchioles is called bronchitis. Yes, the graph we have studied earlier. Tidal volume. This is five hundred to five hundred fifty. It is normally taken as 500. So A is 3. So immediately you eliminated these two options. Then inspiratory reserve volume 2500. So 2 should be 1 or B should be 1. So immediately we came to the answer. Expiratory reserve volume. Expiratory reserve volume is additional volume of air you can send out. That is. Thousand to thousand one hundred, and RB is thousand one hundred to thousand two hundred mL. Okay, this is the spiral, uh, spirometer values which are all plotted in the form of a graph. Spirogram. This diagram is called spirogram. Clear? So you have to study these things. Four volumes, five capacities. Any doubt? This diagram is not in now. NCERT book. Which of the following is an occupational respiratory disorder? Botulism. Botulism is because of Clostridium botulinum, a bacterium. Okay, a bacterium that is living anaerobically. A very dangerous bacterium. <coughs> silicosis the silica particles get inspired and get deposited in the alveolar lining causing occupational lung disease 
silicosis. Anthracosis, anthracis actually here. Anthracis is because of a bacterium anthracis causing bacterial infection. It is very severe in animals. And emphysema, emphysema is reduction in the surface area of exchange of gases. It is not an occupational disease. So the occupational disease is silicosis. Silical particles, sand particles are getting deposited. What is respiratory caution? Volume of carbon dioxide eliminated to the volume of oxygen consumed for breathing, for producing energy for one molecule of a nutrient is called its respiratory caution. For fats, it is 0.7. For carbohydrate, it is 1. How? We are all oxidizing glucose. So, six molecules of carbon dioxide is released. Six molecules of oxygen is consumed. So, six by six is one. Okay. And for tripamitin. See, what is this tripamitin? It is a fat. So, fat is having 0.7. For organic acids, it is 1.3 to 1.4. For proteins, it is 0.9. For carbohydrates, it is 1.0. Okay. So, these are the values. So, this is just to confuse you. 0.9 is for proteins. 0.7 for fats. For organic acids, 1.3 to 1. Point, so, maximum for them. And carbohydrate, it is... Now, there is one interesting factor. In anaerobic respiration, no oxygen is used. So, whatever may be the carbon dioxide produced, say for example it is 6, no oxygen is taken. It is infinite value. So, for anaerobic respiration, since no oxygen is used, the value is infinite. <laughs> okay. Just for interest. And coming to the last question of the day, the tidal volume and expected reserve volume of an athlete. Just to confuse you, okay, is 500 ml and 500 ml. Okay, now what will be the expiratory capacity? That's the question. Expiratory capacity EC. Now we go to the previous question. What is EC? EC is TV plus ERV, expiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume. Okay. That is the clue word. It is very simple. We are having the expiratory reserve volume, ERV, 1000. And tidal volume, we are having 500 ml. That is all what we want. Because... EC is ERV plus TV. We don't want any of this value. If the residual volume is, see, we are not at all interested in residual volume. It will be the volume which is remaining in the lung even after a forceful expiration. That is 1200. It is just to confuse you this part. So, EC is equal to ERV plus TV. So, 1000 plus 500. The answer is 1500 ml. Is that clear? So, you have to be very, very alert. The examiner may be trying to confuse you by providing unwanted data just to confuse you. Maybe using some long, lengthy questions just to make you confused. Okay. Don't be trapped in that. You have to be very alert in question. EC is simply ERV plus TB. This, these are all given and you don't refer to the expiratory capacity and residual volume. So, residual volume is not at all interested or not at all wanted. We want to have EC. So, EC is equal to ERV plus TV only. And with this, I come to the conclusion of the discussion of this chapter. So, thank you all. We'll be coming with another set of questions from the next chapter next day. Until then, Goodbye from my part. Thank you and goodbye once again. Thank you.